Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and it's time for another Factorio space exploration video. Oh yes it is. So let's, let's have a look. I've been uh, carrying on working on the Naquium processing quite a lot because it's still I think going to be a major bottleneck. I mean it, it's a bottleneck already and I think it's going to carry on being a bottleneck when I get on to the next level. Uh, the next level of science. So the Deep Space Science 2. So what I've done now is I come back out to Realm of Shadows and where I used to have this little mine down here and this one here I've come in and I've put in a railway system as well now and it's a very very sim simplistic one because at the moment I've only got um, tra I've only got trains really doing two things and both to the same place so I've so I've put in a depot here that's got a solid strain and a fluid strain and then over here there is an additional Naquium mine because there's, there's another Naquium patch over here. So I've linked this one up by rail. We're bringing acid out to the station and we're picking up Naquium from the Naquium, sorry, Naquitite from the station. Um, and that means this will run. I've got a single station in there which is which is managing to both request and provide. I have a feeling it's a little bit dodgy. It took a little bit of messing around to get it to work. But I think with these numbers set as they are, it seems to be working. I'm not going to sort of complain too much. I'm not going to touch it too much in case I cause it, in case I cause something to break. So, yes, this is basically working, and I think I've got it working by setting this to far less than a train, so far more than a train load in the negative direction. A train carries 150,000, um, and setting this to the request threshold to fairly high, which means that it will only requ it'll never requ it'll never have enough in in this station. This will always say a negative number there, even when these are completely full. Um, so we'll never get a train coming here trying to load up. At least that's my hope. Um, the provide threshold is at 240 stacks, so that means when this fills up to a train's worth, we should get a train coming in, and it should, it should, fingers crossed, all work quite happily. I think this, I th and it seems to be working at the moment. The big tell is going to be when I add in more of these mining patches, more stations, because now that I've got this basic setup. It's going to be relatively straightforward to copy and paste it to somewhere else, using exactly the same everything's for it. The biggest problem I've got with this, and this is this is slightly ironic given the previous problem I had. Um, previous problem I had was that this this ship was bringing out an amount of sulphur where I said yes, bring out twenty thousand sulphur and, and five thousand iron or whatever whatever the numbers were that I picked, and it would always bring out exactly the same amount, and it would try and dump it into these warehouses down here. That meant that the warehouses filled up and it stopped working. So in an attempt to stop that happening, I've hooked up to this um, transmitter here. And that tra that ha we have here, we have negative numbers, minus 20k, minus 5k that I want. Um, we've hooked that up to this transmitter. And then at the other end, in Norvis Orbit, we've got a receiver here. Um, and that's now hooked up to these ones, and these are set to, to minor, uh, to, to trigger on negative whatevers. Um, let's actually check. So yeah, these, these, so these are set to, to load if it's less than zero. So we get the negative numbers coming across, and it will then load this up until we've got the 20,000 um, iron that we want. Uh, 20,000 sulfur and 5,000 iron that we want. The ship will also wait until it's managed to unload all of its crushed naquium, and that's why it's still here. Because the next layer, next set down the down the line has also broken, and I'll come back to that in a moment. So this was set up to dis to prevent me having too much sulphur, and because I did already have too much sulphur, that meant that when this ship came out, it didn't bring any with it, and so there was only there was the right amount of sulphur to keep this system working. <laughs> However, like a muppet, I then came in and put in all of these tanks up here, and I put in a pump to take all of the sulfuric acid from here and, and try and keep these, try and fill these tanks up, so that the train would have something to pick up in order to take over there. And that meant that all these mining drills have now been starved of sulfuric acid, because there's quite a lot over here. There's lots of acid over here in these tanks, and so that's used up all of the sulfur that came over. So we've not got any acid for the other two tanks. So this is now running very, very slowly. It's only loading up when on the, when when it, when we get a train coming out, when a train comes over from the from the other mine and unloads here, then we get some naquium. But it means the other two mines aren't being used at the moment, which is a little bit silly. Um, but I'm hoping, and I, I, I'm thinking, wishing, hoping, praying, <laughs> um, that this is all going to sort of work and behave itself once things sort of 
settle down a bit and we have a we have a, a steady input of everything and, and things just sort of fill up all the buffers and it should just start working however until then i'm probably going to need to launch this spaceship at least once manually rather than using the automated thing which waits for it to be full of nequitite um because that will mean it'll get out of the way and the new ship the, the other ship is going to be able to land here with its supply of sulfur so once those sort of once that sort of balances out we should be okay however it does mean I suspect I'm probably going to have exactly the same problem every time I set up a new station, a, a new mining outpost like this one. Because, oops, here we go, the train's coming in and loading up. And that happens really, really quickly because Naquium is so voluminous. Uh, voluminous being what we decided on chat was the opposite of dense. So it's a, good, well, it's, it's a nice word and I'm going to carry on using it, even if it does sound like some sort of massive underwear. Um, yeah, so every time I put one of these out, we're going to have another set of these tanks that needs to be filled up by a train, and that's going to take 150,000 salt sulfuric acid away and cause the sort of shortages we've been seeing over here. So I perhaps need to increase the size of the buffer here in these chests. So at the moment, we're saying um, 20,000, and that's probably that's probably enough, except there's two of these ships there's quite a, there's a strong risk of actually 40,000 ending up out here if we ha if we get down to zero because the other ship will fill up to 20,000 and then while it's flying over and doesn't count towards this this ship will fly back and fill up the system to 20,000 and fill up to 20,000 and then there'll be 40,000 to be brought over so that's that's the worst case now i could possibly work around it by having more of these more of these warehouses maybe maybe more maybe have all of them for both both types of resource i think that might be the best way to do it um, We'll see. I'll have, a, have to have a bit of a think about that, and we'll see how it goes. But that might make sense and keep everything reasonably tidy. We shall see. So this, there's a bit of a bit of messing around required there, and we've had exactly the same problem here on in Kalida's asteroid belt. So I've used exactly the same system here for bringing out um, uranium. No, for bringing out sulfur and iron to make sulfuric acid to mine up the uranium. But again, I got the numbers wrong because I didn't basically because I didn't take productivity modules and product mining productivity into account. So that just means for now I have fixed it. I believe I believe I fixed it. But until then, we've still got how much we've still got 10,000 sulfur in this in this warehouse so until that gets down to zero which is going to be quite a long time I keep needing to launch the ship manually now maybe the sensible thing would be to come what I plan to do rather is to come over here my next trip home from we're out in realm of shadows I want to put in another warehouse here so there's somewhere for all of this to unload into and then that can pass over into this one and we've got a larger buffer then and that should just sort the problem out and we won't won't have it in the future but for now I'm just launching this manually every time it every time the system all backs up then it flies off dumps in dump unloads the uranium in, in on Norvis flies back again and things are basically okay uh, well, I say things are okay. It can then load up again and I need to launch it again manually. And I think I'm probably going to need to do that about 10 more times because it seems that to load up the warehouse on here takes about a thousand sulfur. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> it, 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 it's a problem that will eventually be sorted out, but it's going to take a while to get to that point. So I mentioned that in Norvis orbit here we've got this problem where we've got where the um, the crushed Naquium has now backed up, and that wouldn't normally be a problem. That would just be a, oh good we've got plenty of supply. Except the reason it's backed up, if we have a look on Tulip, was because at that point we ran out of glass, um, so we weren't actually doing the processing. Now we are doing the processing again, so this this ship can get gradually unloaded, which is is happening as we are processing through here. But I've only just done that, so there's all this backlog there's 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 how much we've got in here we've got about 8,000 crushed naquium to get through uh, crushed naquitite I will eventually learn to get those words the right way around 8,000 of that to get through before the ship will be ready to launch again so it's it's trickling through I mean you can see by how quick well you can see how by how much the, how little this is moving that it's not actually going through all that quickly but we are getting through it there we go it's running a little bit there and then it stops again. So eventually we'll get through the uh, the the fourth, the eight thousand that we've got in here, and we'll be and the ship will be able to launch and think, and we'll start to actually pull this, pull the stuff through again. And at that point, I can have a look at it and see how the speed's going. Now we do still have the problem here where, we're, because of this lack of belt, we've only got half of the machinery working. So I do need to come over here with some blue belts and sort that out. But I haven't done that yet. That's still still to be done. 
So the reason this stalled and the reason we're having such a major problem at the moment is because, as I hinted on, we ran, ran out of glass for making the vitalic acid uh, systems. And that happened because this um, this pot, this landing pad didn't manage to empty itself of all of the rocket separate sections that were uh, backed up in it. And that happened because along here, this rocket... Um, now I don't know why... Oh, we ran out of space capsules. Oh, great. <laughs> it's all a bit broken. Anyway, so what happened was um, yeah, this, this rocket built up to um, to being completely full without having put in enough normal rocket sections. So we had the thing where the rocket didn't didn't launch because it was full, so it couldn't put in normal rocket sections to build the rocket, so it couldn't launch. I fixed that in the normal way by telling the, this inserter and, and this inserter not to load until this is has, has a full rocket, and telling this one to stop loading when this one has the full 100, 100 rocket sections in it. So that should work. I don't know why this one isn't loading, actually. Oh. Ah. Uh, that shouldn't be set like that. Because we need to put a rocket pod into here. But we can't put a rocket pod into here until this is full. So actually... Hmm. I need to put one in. Right. I think, actually, we need to just have that always run. And that will put all of the rocket pods into there. And then it will start working. We'll have the rocket here now. We built the rocket. We can now start loading it up from here. Okay, that's that's good. So that was that was the mistake. I'd I'd, I'd had this one not not always inserted. The slight downside of this whole and this will then send all of the rocket sections off to wherever they're most needed. The slight downside of this system <clears throat> is that you do end up because you use up a certain amount of rocket sections each time a rocket flies, but you, but the rocket pod always survives. Um, and at the moment I've got rocket reuse rocket survive rocket reusability is at 68% so we lose about a third of the rocket fragment sections and that means that gradually if you if you use if you send out from somewhere that's receiving rockets to somewhere that needs to send rockets eventually the place that needs to send rockets ends up with crazy quantities um, of rocket pods so we see here on Ganymede we've got with this chest filled up, so I had to put in another one, and this chest is already filled up as well, and this has still got loads in it. So we have crazy numbers of these uh, these rocket um, pods just building up absolutely everywhere, um, and that means we don't get the rocket parts being brought out here when we need them, because it just just fills up with the rocket rocket pods. Um, I'm not really sure what the best way to deal with that is at the moment. Um, we shall just have to see, I guess. And I should actually remove that inserter. Um, because I don't want to have rocket pods on... Oh, maybe I do. They can come down here if they really want. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is a little bit weird and complicated and, and, and not ideal. Um, perhaps what I should have... Is a one of the is a provide no a requester chest on this side putting them onto the other side and they can be fed down here to this. I don't think there's any point in doing that though to be honest. Um, I think this is probably going to work as it is and once we if we ever use up all the ones in here, then I can pull that up. So um, yes, that's a long convoluted way to saying I have too many rocket pods and out here on Ganymede and I don't really know what to do with them. Um, I should probably have a look at a few of the other places where things are still coming out by rocket like frost. <clears throat> and see if we have the same problem here because this is yeah that's more rocket pods than we need for this many rocket sections so I think what I need to do yeah how does this even work yeah because this is full all of these are yet yeah, these are the provide yeah okay um well yeah we're right in this case we're trying to unload everything into these that's kind of okay. It just means we don't have enough of these chests. Um, and in the storage system here, I have very few chests, any sort of chests. So uh, I don't think I can fix this one from here. Maybe what I need to do is just do a round trip in my spaceship. Go to all of these places on at least all the ones that are in my in my solar system and just collect up all of the um, or in large quantities of these um, space capsules and just bring them all back to I don't really know where somewhere somewhere central probably Norvis and just try and reset all of that because it's it, it, it's gone a bit funny basically is what I'm trying to say so that's something I might think about or I might just try and switch everything over to um, to spaceship so I don't have to worry about it anymore that might be a better way to do it in the long run really 
Okay, so that's Yak shaved a bit away from what I was saying on Tulip. Did that cover everything? I think that did cover everything that's been done on Tulip. Yes, I think so. So we now have a, a supply of glass coming out here. <clears throat> we have the... Um, I'm still not. I'm still a bit worried that's not going to be enough, but we'll see when I upgrade everything. We've got the Vitalic Acid being made here. We've still not upgraded this to, to, to the dual thing because I don't have enough um, modules up over here and I don't have enough belts, but that can, that can be sorted out when I have a moment. Um, and so... And so we are ticking through the, Naqu the crushed Naquitite. We're now down to 5,000 here from the 8,000 we had before. So as you can see, it is getting there. So this is this this is sort of a sort of okay, and will gradually improve. <laughs> gradually. So yeah, kind of vaguely reasonably happy with that sort of. The other thing that I've done that I'm quite pleased with in Norvis Orbit, I've made a new spaceship. This one here. And this is an emergency umbrella um, defense system. So the idea is, if I get when I get a coronal mass ejection warning, now most of my planets have already got a decent umbrella system set up. They've got decent amounts of power. They're probably going to be okay, but not all of them have. And there's some somewhere it's a little bit of a worry. So what I've done is I've put in, I've made this spaceship that has a beam receiver that will and um, two a dual dual heat exchangers and turbine. So this system is capable of producing. I think actually just over a gigawatt, and so we can get then go out when when we get warned about an energy a, a, a coronal mass ejection like this one that's heading for frost in it's 14 hours away but you know it's nice to be prepared. But this has a peak power of uh, 0.3 gigawatts, which is almost nothing to be well these days it's almost nothing. Um, I can send this I can fly my ship out there. It's got a gigawatt of defensive power. It can just sit in orbit over frost and happily defend it against that um, that coronal mass ejection. So this is, this is just going to be able to easily protect hopefully any planet. Now frost is a long way out which is why it's only a third of a gigawatt. The ones that are further in are significant, do, to, do get hit with significantly more power. Um, I can't remember how much though but I'm hoping that this, this gigawatt is going to be enough. Or at the very least it's going to be enough to take the main edge of it and then what um, other umbrella defense is already on that planet can block the rest of it. We shall see, but I've got 14 hours before I need to actually test it, so it's just going to sit here. And we'll see how it goes. I put a Spidertron on here as well, I can't remember why, um, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. The ship isn't capable of landing on any of the planets, so I can't use it as a sort of a general building ship. Oh, but I can send it out if I ever need to send it to go, go out and do some more building work in Kalidus orbit, for example. I could send this ship over there with everything it needs in this buffer chest. So that's that's the uh, the plan with that one, and I'm I'm this this is actually a suggestion from someone in in uh, stream chat. So uh, thank you for that. I think it's a really really good idea having this ship, and I'm um, I'm looking forward to being able to use it. But it's as I said, it's 14 hours away, so it's going to be a while until I actually get to test it. <laughs> so that's about it. I mean, I've done a little bit of fiddling, little little things here and there. I've I've, re I've got the beam directed at this ship again, so we can make sure this is always fully charged before it leaves. I went out to um, Kalidus orbit with some with some cunning plans and decided to extend this. So I've um, I've come out here. I've, I've boosted the amount of power that's being put into this beam, and this is the spaceship charging beam. So it should charge spaceships up really quickly. Um, I did, however, plan to put in more solar. I put in some more solar, but then I ran out of space scaffolding, so I wasn't able to put in quite as much as I was intending. That said, we're at 23 gigawatts here now, so it's not exact. We're not exactly um, short of power. Uh, it just meant I couldn't expand any more than I uh, was, was originally going to. I also came in and trimmed very because I was so short of the spaceship of the space station scaffolding. Um, well, there was 18 in there. I came in and carefully trimmed around the edges of all of this, which is why this looks quite so neat around here. Um, just to make sure, I, just to get that little bit extra to finish this patch off, um, and you can see how well that went. So that was a little bit silly. Basically, I came out without enough of that. But yeah, never mind. And that's basically what I have for you today. So uh, the main, the main push, the main thing that I've done is try and sort out the sulfur supplies to basically everywhere, and also get this train system up in in uh, in Realm of Shadows working. I know it's a bit dark here. I'm trying to shine my light on the interesting things so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Oh yes, another thing that's vaguely relevant and worth mentioning. Over here we are producing we're producing rocket fuel in the horrifically slow way where you, you dig up tiny amounts of copper. You then use in quite a lot of water and enormous quantities of time to make... Uh, oh, rocket fuel and scrap. I forgot it produced scrap. That's potentially a problem. Oh dear. Um, yes, so we're producing rocket fuel in small, very small quantities. That's coming over here and being fed into, all the way around here, and being fed into these trains. 
um, yes, we've got some scrap there, so this is going to stop working eventually. That's the thing I need to fix, but we'll do that in the next in the next stream. I'll probably just have it dump into a chest, because if it's a 10% chance of scrap, that means I'll be able to produce enormous amounts of fuel before it becomes an actual problem. Uh, but yes, we'll uh, we'll deal with that as and when. The train's gone off to go and get some more... Um, here it comes back with some more with some more naquium, uh, Naquitite. Yeah, so this is, is, is working. It's just... It needs just needs more and more and more, but now I've built up the system to this level. It shouldn't be too hard to just to expand it and expand it and expand it. Um, at least that's my hope. <coughs> so thank you for watching. Uh, come along on uh, Wednesday night, and you can watch me actually going in and solving all these problems live on the stream. Hopefully that'll be interesting. I um, it seems to be reasonably popular, so apparently some people think it's interesting. Please do come along for that. I'm also going to be streaming on Monday night when we shall be playing. Um, Fa uh, fa no, not Factorio. Minecraft, Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. That's me and a group of friends, and we're sort of we're working along gradually through it. We um, explored a new dimension this week. Uh, we went off to the Twilight Forest, and I did some more dark magic, and we and we carried on building things up and here and there. And we're working gradually on machines and automation and other such stuff. They're all the things that are trying to make Minecraft more into a into a sort of a Factorio type game, which is of course obviously going to be a better game because Factorio is brilliant. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Also, the GTA videos coming out on Thursdays. I'm playing around with a few new things for those, so they, they should be getting gradually better and better. Um, please check them out, especially, um, especially if you haven't before, because I think they're a lot of fun. And I'm putting out little other videos here and there, as and when I have time. So we'll, we'll see, we'll, uh, and, and inclination, and have done interesting things. So we'll, we'll try and keep those going as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, an addendum to the video. I've just come back to here, uh, to, to, um, to Norbis Orbit. I've noticed that we've had a ship come and go, presumably, from here, because all of the crushed Naquim has, uh, Naquitite has gone. However, this spaceship hasn't, um, and I'm not sure why not. So let's have a look at these, these, um, uh, accumulators, uh, no, combinators down here and try and work out what's going on. So, this is not, the, the iron one has triggered because we have greater than or equal to Okay. Ah, okay. So these these need to trigger when it gets. Is this? The, let's try and work out what's going on here. So, yes, we're getting the signal fed in here. So the signal's coming in here. We've got 18. It says 18,000 iron. That's the 18,000 iron that's at the other end that we're getting from here. So we've got the excess of iron. However, the 101 um, sulfur that we apparently have is not triggering it. So what we should actually have is down. Why does that say? Okay, so what we need to say down here is that this one needs, needs to be these need to be greater than zero. So let's change this one first because this is comparing. So what we've got here is we've got the signal coming in from the other other side being be, and then we're loading up if if there's less than zero. However, so we want the ship to leave when there is greater than zero. But we'll set it to greater than zero because that way, if all of the um, computation, if all if the transmitter fails, then we'll still get then the ship will still take off. Um, and we've got the sort of the buffer in this bit of belt here, so we won't ever we, we shouldn't ever end up with exactly zero in here, which is why it now says 101. That's the buffer size. So let's leave that to greater than zero, and then we change this one to also say um, is greater than and zero there, and now the ship should leave. Clip. There we go. <clears throat> and I need to do the same on this ship as well, so that when it gets to the other end. It is, still it is still wired into here, isn't it? Yes, so we're wired into the, um, the through here thingy. That's a good English. Um, and then up here, these should say... Oh, these ones I have already done, but actually I reckon these should be greater than so great. Oh, there's a rocket probe rocket launching. <laughs> Haven't seen one of those go for a while. I wonder what that noise was. Anyway, that was a, a brief addendum. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.